Hello everyone, this is Jotto, and welcome to the patch review, which is late. Because I have two people on with me this time, so it was a bit difficult getting everyone together and blah de blah de blah. Anyway, so the two people that are coming on with me today are the newly minted Mana Grind EU team captain, also known as Moon, who is a... Hello everyone! He's a bit nice of a common feature. <laughs> nice to be on the, on the show again. <laughs> I'm... Sorry that the show is delayed, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, Moon has been busy. Um, but yeah, Moon's a bit of a common feature on my stream whenever I do decide to stream, and also on all the patch reviews. You need to have the German with you with all the patch reviews. The German. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other person who you just heard in the background is the Shiv, who is the Mana Grind tournament manager who took over from me when I decided to stop doing it. So, say hi. Hello. It's the first time I've had Shiv on uh, one of my videos, although I have been on the Mana Cast with him before. So you yeah, guys I've been on remember. a couple of your streams as well when we were doing stuff, just messing around. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been interesting. So, yeah, it's, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's not so hard to catch up uh, Shiv because he's like awake all the time, but it's hard to catch up me, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? I'm operating on like six hours of sleep for this, man, and you were late, you bastard. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, first things first, before we do any of the uh, the changes, let's just read the little paragraph which I enjoy reading at the beginning of all of these uh, little patch notes that Blizzard puts out. So, in our latest Hearthstone patch, we made some changes to certain cards that we've listed in detail below. No kidding. This big set of balance changes should be one of our last as we look ahead to the impending open beta of Hearthstone. That's incredibly optimistic, by the way. The word impending seems almost ominously Yeah. Funny, you know? <laughs> impending doom. <laughs> Once the game is live and available for everyone, we plan on making very few card changes only in emergencies. They're going to be eating those words. Yeah, they're going to be eating those words. Okay, so um, I was about to say let's look at the card changes, but they said it for me. Take a look at the card changes in the patch below. Okay. So the cards that have been changed are Abusive Sergeant, Blood Imp, Dark Iron Dwarf, Defender of Argus, Pyroblast, Sylvanas, Windrunner, but everyone just calls it Sylvanas, and Unleash the Hounds. So, uh, and as usual, they're refundable for their full cost, something which Moon took advantage of because he opened a golden Sylvanas, so he just disenchanted it, got another legendary, <coughs> and a Sylvanas. <laughs> Lucky bastard. <laughs> Yeah, this happened to a couple of people. Um, anyway, so, first ones first, Unleash the Hounds. Now, Unleash the Hounds was a new card from last patch, which was a change to the old Unleash the Hounds because it was causing issues, so to speak. But anyway, now it costs two from four, and the reasoning is Unleash the Hounds was intended to give hunters their own form of AoE and to have synergy with the other beast cards, but its old cost was too prohibitive, which I agree with. Anyway, so we'll start with Shiv, because he seems to be the resident I'm going to stick with Hunter no matter what player. That's not entirely true, that's not, and you know that, but that's the size point. Um, okay, so the original Unleash the Hounds. This, this card became like the crux of every Hunter's deck, because, well, let's be honest, Hunters are a crap class. Um, they were pigeonholed to play one way, and that was with the whole Hunter OTK. Yep. And the problem was, it was so cheap that anybody could run, so you saw it just run rampant like a virus. And everybody had it, and people complained and complained and complained. It was like so the, the plague. Problem, <laughs> the problem was, though, people figured out how to beat it, you know, and that was Defender of Argus and Sun Fury Protector. You know, you could play around it. There were ways of stopping it. So the meta kind of nerfed it, and then Lizard, in their infinite wisdom, decided to come by. It's like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're going to change that, make that a four mana, and do something completely different that most of you are going to just say, why? And I remember when this came out at four mana, First reaction to everyone was like, why isn't it two? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That was the exact thing that we said. That was the exact things we all said. And so now, because of that, Hunters went from everybody's playing them to nobody was playing them. I mean, Literally. I tried so many different combinations. It uh, was so worse. It was worse than Rogue post nerf. It, it was. It was extreme. They went from, you know, like a 1.5, maybe 2, to... Uh, wait, they have a tier? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you ask any competitive player, and their exact words were, yeah, Hunter is the worst class in the world. They're in the, the game, ones yeah. beneath 
the trash bin. Fair so enough. now they fixed this to kind of amend their piss poor design. What skills. do you think of the the new one though at two mana? The new one opens up a lot more possibilities, but again, pushes hunters back into a all or nothing single archetype of yeah. everything to the base. And I don't yeah. know if I agree with it, that's a good thing, but at least it makes it a little bit more playable, but the class in general needs a lot more help. I totally yeah. agree. The problem with Hunter is, is it, it is not diverse at all, and that's because of the hero power. Like, yeah. you, have to, you have to play like a rushdown deck. Because of the hero power, it's just just doesn't make sense. If you play like a slow slow game, then you I mean, trade up minions. You can play. Th there's two pigeonholes basically for a hunter at the moment. There's rush them down and finish them with hero power, or there's sit on an eagle horn bow with a million traps and slowly kill them with your hero power. Yeah, <laughs> but that tends to fall flat on its face. Due Most to of the time, yeah. Giants and things of that nature. Just so, murdering yeah. you. Yeah. Anyway, as far as I'm concerned, I've been playing a bunch against Hunters recently because they're everywhere. Um, and they become like the cancer of Hearthstone, I swear to god. They're just everywhere. Like, you don't even lose to them that often, but they're just annoying. <laughs> mm -hmm. But At least um, you know your games are fast. Yeah, they're over quickly, but I'd rather play yeah. against actually If they have a legit really decks. good draw and you have like an arrow draw, you might lose against you might lose. Hearthstone decks very well. Something like, I've noticed though... It's really fast. Unleash the Hounds has just turned into an augmentable arcane explosion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that can but be buffed na up by a Timberwolf. Yeah, augmentable. It's just like, instead of spell power, you have Timberwolves. I, I would <laughs> like to say, I would like to say Unleash the Hounds has forced a lot of, the, this new version has forced a lot of players to craft uh, certain cards. Uh, sea Giant being one of them. Uh, and the most epically awesome legendary ever. Leroy Jenkins, because that card interaction with Unleash the Hounds is it's just disgusting. <laughs> it is just disgusting. It's like, hmm, you have two minions. No, you have four. By the way, Unleash the Hounds. Yeah. <laughs> you no, know, it's just, it's like a little bang for the buck there. And Leroy, I mean, like, Leroy I was... was already a great card. This just made him even better. Yeah, Moon. We, we, we see a lot more mid game taunts coming back because of this deck in the last few days. Like, Sengens are everywhere. Hoggers There's back. a lot of engines I've noticed actually, but just yeah. something something interesting. Just for anyone, everyone listening right now, just because we're talking a lot about this card does not mean that the card is good. It just means that there's like this card is designed to be ridiculously combo centric that it's not even fun anymore. <laughs> there's so many combos with this card, but the problem is that if you don't have the combo, it's useless. Yeah. So I also. I it's also want to warn people weird. that look at this card and go, "Oh, I could have a great infinite draw cycle." Yes, yes, you can with this. I draw your entire I've, deck. I fatigue on turn eight because <laughs> of this card. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, okay. um, I played against a guy earlier who went buzzard, buzzard, unleash the hounds, unleash the hounds, and he fatigued himself to death I <laughs> from twenty I life. Don't. <laughs> I double buzzard with a cult master on the board. Oh. Okay. The funny thing is, the cards, the card advantage doesn't even do anything because the rest of the hunter cards are crap. I agree. <laughs> but anyway, moving on, we we shouldn't be talking about like unleash the hounds for the rest of the day. Although we probably could. Um, yeah. <laughs> Pyroblast is now ten mana from eight. The eight cost Pyroblast made for an uninteractive experience when mages only needed to do 10 damage during the course of the game and then double power blast more accurately 20 by the way blizzard get your uh, arguments correct there um double power blast you for the win we want mages to be more interactive you failed with your opponent to achieve victory rather than delay the game until they can power blast that was last patch <laughs> <laughs> they weren't delaying anything yeah. they were smashing you in the face repeatedly until turn eight and then they would hit you in the face with a giant fireball <laughs> There wasn't, there wasn't any delaying happening <laughs> with mages. It was pretty bad. There wasn't. There wasn't. Ah, uh, yeah. Now, Moon, as someone who has probably been responsible for mage coming back to the meta game and caused way too much damage to the meta game, which has been finally fixed, what's your opinion yeah, on this? <laughs> we 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 will get later to that point. <laughs> um. I still would have preferred that they made it uh, legendary, but there are, are several issues if you made it a legendary. One thing is the dust. One thing is the dust. 
the second thing is you won't see it at all like in arena anymore and people can't get it that easy they will complain i still think that, that by the way that um chib's idea which i sort of added to when he uh when he told me about it about having legendary spells but um having like onyx cards which is something which blizzard has actually expressed that they might even look into because it was interesting um which is that you have every single class has a onyx card which is a spell that you can only play one of in your deck so for other tcgs kind of like a spec cards from pokemon or any of the super rare stuff from uh, magic and such um but yeah something like that but it's a spell but okay. the idea that I added to it was that the actual rarity of it for Arena and uh, Dustwise was epic. Yeah. Okay. But you, yeah. So it'd be an epic, but you could only run one of them. Yeah, that could there, be There is a slight flaw in that plan, though. Which is dusting. No, no, no. The dust, that's not the flaw. The flaw is, is that Priest exists. Oh. All right, so yeah, you may only have yeah. one of, but how often have we seen like a priest pull like two copies of something you only had yeah, one of? Yeah, but that could deck? happen with any legendary. So that that's irrelevant. But anyway, the, yeah. the main problem would be uh, dusting. But the way around that is just to say it disenchants for what it was worth before the change. Yeah, <laughs> and, but and I, th I uh, think it'd be a great idea personally. All right, let, let Moon talk. We're interrupting the coming, German. Coming back to Pyroblast uh, to the change itself. Um, I think. You could adapt to the to the kind of aggro-ish uh, uh, mage, like where it, where they really want to finish you on turn eight. You could adapt to that. You could kind of prevent it, maybe delay it into turn nine or ten even. <coughs> um, but like I always felt the issue was double pyroblast. That that yeah. was all, all, always my point. Like you just feel so frustrated. You know when they pyroblast you. Then they probably and you and you're not dead, like you at I don't know seven or six HP. They pyro and you know, you oh my god, he has another power blast or fireball. It's just GG. <laughs> or fire. But yeah. I, yeah, something else random by the way is the cost is more than just delaying it. It means you can't frostbolt with it or hero power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... which I I think was a huge problem with the card originally. Yeah, the ability to it combo it. The range. Yeah, I mean, I like this change personally in terms of how it affects the game, but I kind of wish that they did something else with Pyroblast as opposed to just saying, hey, all these aggro mages, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, and, and honestly, this change had nothing to do with balance per se, but more to do with too many people complaining. Yeah. And I, I think that's a really big thing right there. A lot of them were um, competitive players with Pyroblast, though, is the difference. <laughs> Yeah, uh, even mage players are going, you know, this might be just a little bit too much here. We we, we might need to finagle this. Quinn Perry and... had an interesting idea with Pyroblast. What did he say? Um, he he uh, suggested that that Pyroblast should be changed to deal half the damage of the actual life. Uh, like, if, if your opponent has 30, 30 life, he's on 15. If he has 15, he gets like seven seven damage or something. So Pyroblast can never actually kill someone. Yeah. That's, that that could be interesting. That's that interesting. Could, it, yeah. Yeah. I like, I like that. this. Yeah, but then it kind of makes, you know, like double fireball way more powerful. It's kind of awkward though at that point though. It is awkward. It, it is, it is. <laughs> Especially yeah, late game. It's like, hey look, he has five life. Nice it's, ten yeah. mana spell that deals two damage. They, he also <laughs> said that Pyroblast should be changed from the mana cost then obviously. Like, yeah. A late game card with eight mana, which is which does like six damage, would not make any sense. Yeah. So it's like a spell version of Alex Straza in its own unit. Kind of. Like, kind yeah. of, yeah. Anyway, Pyroblast, as far as I'm concerned, from com for competitive play, Pyroblast is a good change. For casual play, it's a good change. For mages, it's a bad change. <laughs> oh my god, mages have fallen flat on their face. They don't know how to recover. Anyway, um, Pyroblast, I actually do like the change, though. The other thing was um, it helps bring down the domination of druids a bit, inadvertently, because uh, mages were just sniping all of the rogues and warlock shields up decks and all the things that could kill druids. <laughs> they were just dying to Pyroblasts. <laughs> so, anyway... Um, moving on to, I think, has been one of the 
most disputed changes in the entire patch, which I do not understand why it's so disputed, is Blood Imp. So Blood Imp was changed substantially. It was changed from a 1-1 one -one that gave plus one health to all of your minions, which was stupid, to a 0-1 one for one that has the Young Priestess effect. So giving random friendly minion one health. Now, the actual uh, justification for this was that Warlock has three very strong one drops, made Warlock rush deck slightly stronger than we were comfortable with. Now, um, I'm actually uh, going to probably give my opinions on this one first, because Blood Imp was causing some serious issues, and I don't understand the fissure that's formed in the community with uh, Blood Imp, which is that a lot of people have been saying, oh, it's like almost unplayable now, because Young Priestess has attack, and that's more relevant in an aggro deck, which I do agree with. But then there's this weird sort of section of the community which is saying, oh no no, this is a buff, because in these really slow shields up decks you can play Blood Imp and then give your giants extra health. I pose a question. Why does an A8 need more health, firstly? Second of all, Thank where you. do you fit two one drops into a shields up deck? And thirdly, how is this going to survive the swipes and blade flurries and such that happen constantly? <laughs> like Get over it, people. It's a nerf. Like, they, it's a nerf. They, they, their intention wasn't to buff it. Like, <laughs> it's a nerf. Get over it. Seriously. Um, and the card is pretty useless. The other argument, by the way, I've heard from several people, including Noxious, was uh, Knife Juggler with double blood imps is really good, because then you get a 3-4. And I'm like, wait a second. You'd get a 3-4 anyway pre-patch and two one twos. And that's with one offensive minion on the board. <laughs> Stop it, people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it then after doesn't a work. swipe... <laughs> yeah. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> like, this change is driving me around the bend because of the sheer amount of people that messaged me but in TS a, and Hearthstone. It was a needed change. Like, if, if Warlock had, like, board control, oh, they had, like, yeah. three, four it minions... Was needed. Double blood him. They could just prevent prevent the AOE yeah. with their blood imp. Like double it was uh, double blood imp was unbeatable for rogues and druids without like a nut draw. Oh yeah, and th the other thing that this change did was took one of the archetypes that everybody and I do mean everybody tested hates. against continuously. <laughs> it made Murlocs less playable, and it also made uh, Warlock <laughs> aggro, which for a time dominated the entire meta game. If you remember that. Oh yeah, that was hilarious. And then mages came and said, "Oh, nice, uh, nice uh, flame imps. I'm going to pyroblast you to death all the time mm -hmm. on turn." Yep. <laughs> um, and then after that, we sort of went into the meta game we have right now. But it made a deck. That deck was still sniping people. Like I remember um, the last week MLG tournament, the last tournament that was played before the change. Uh, Dark One X, who in my mind is one of the best European players in the world. Agreed. Yeah, he got knocked out, and I beat the guy because I have a. Uh, I beat the guy who beat One him. One of the best European players in the world. Okay, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, he's one of the best players in the world that's from Europe. Okay. That there are people more... in North America who sense. play on the European server, Moon. Okay, that makes more Chaki. sense. Chaki. Chaki does. Yeah, like, get over it. <laughs> anyway. um, Yeah, he lost. He got sniped in round one by a Warlock aggro deck. And to give you an idea, this is someone who gets like top four and finals in almost every tournament he plays in. And he got sniped in round one by a Warlock aggro deck because it was like, because the guy drew almost perfectly and then he drew nothing. And then the Warlock aggro deck played against me in the next round. First game, I steamrolled him because he didn't draw any blood imps. Second game, double blood imp. I lost instantly. Third game, beat him because he drew no blood imps. This was how stupid this card was. <laughs> It was, it was causing massive swings for no reason. It made every single matchup against uh, Warlock Aggro a coin flip. Pretty it, much, yeah. It was just a weird card, and it should never have existed. <laughs> I mean, Dru Druids didn't really have much of a problem with this because Swipe exists, but it, the, the whole coin flip nature really did bother Druids. And yeah. I, I every player I ever talked to who plays <clears throat> Druids, they're like, yeah, against Warlock Aggro, it's like a coin flip. I really hate it. So, yeah, this was probably the main reason. Anyway, anything else to add, Moon, or should we move on? Move on. Okay. Um, on to the... 
Okay, now this one is a change, which I have a feeling is going to come back to bite them at some point, considering they said they don't want to make any more changes. So the first one is Warsong Commander is has been reworked. Uh, when you play a minion with three or less attack, play, keep in mind, it can go above three attack and it still has the effect, it gains charge. And the second one is they rework charge to three mana, which is absurd, by the way, <laughs> for a charge, um, and it gives it to attack as well. And their reasoning is both of these cards were key components of the one turn kill or OTK. Yes, Blizzard, thank you for clarifying that up. Decks that uh, kill your opponent in one turn without requiring any other cards on the board. Or any cards on the board. Bit of a miswording there. Anyway, we want the game to be about playing minions and fighting for board control rather than just waiting until you can play your big combo and win in one turn with no interaction for your opponent. First of all, that last line is irrelevant because there was a lot of interaction from your opponent. Um, yes, there was. But anyway, so... Now, everyone has agreed that this killed the uh, Molten Giants and Alex Drazo combo. Molten Giants, I'm fine with leaving because that that deck showed up in Cockatrice when they were 10-10 Giants and oh. everyone despised you if you played it. Um, and then it reappeared when they were 8-8 eight, eight Giants. And everyone despised you if you played it. So I'm fine with that leaving. It was kind of skillless. It was just stupid with all the youthful brewmasters. Fine, get rid of it. Leave the game, please. The second one, however, I have a bit of a problem with. Because charge, the card charge, was being used in a combo called Alexstrasza OTK. The super thing about Alexstrasza OTK was that your opponent had to set up for a turn to do it, which means that if you died to that without giving the green light to smash your opponent in the face, and you lost, you either had the worst draw imaginable or you were a bad player. <laughs> so, I'm I kind mean, of yeah. meh with Alexstrasza combo leaving, especially considering the only viable warrior deck right now costs 11,000 dust. <laughs> like... <laughs> There, there's a cheaper version, it's just not as consistent. Like, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <clears throat> that's my opinion on it. They got rid of a... They got rid of one cheap combo, and then they murdered another one, which was actually very skill-based as a matchup. I'm gonna start with Moon on this one. What do you think about it? I agree with you that it was very skill-based on the matchup. Um, it was also annoying at the same time, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be fair. You could make a uh, lot of mistakes playing Alex Straza combo as well, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, I'm actually interested in what people are coming up with now. I didn't see that many warriors uh, running around these days. Same. Um, maybe they are still figuring out what to do. I think a rushdown deck can still work, like with weapons where you just go for phase. Yep. Because you have you have enough sustain with shield blocks. What and about what shields. about the deck that is aptly named Warrior Legendaries? Um, I, I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. It's it's extremely good. Uh. It's extremely expensive, as you said. <laughs> um, it's basically a slight variation of the uh, of the control deck. Yeah. Like of the of the regular warrior control deck, it has some variations in it. Yep. Um, I think I'm actually putting it in my uh, other three decks. I was going to talk about from the voting from last week. It's going to be one of the decks yeah. I'm looking at. But uh, it's an interesting deck, at least. Anyway, oh, yeah. it is. It is. Um, Warrior is still a fun class to play. Um, if you think about it, it was one of the weakest classes like one one and a half months ago or something, or one one month ago. It's still a bit sketchy. Depends on the player. Uh, yeah, but it's I think it's it's viable now. Like you can play yeah, it in competitive uh, play if you have a good deck. Yep. What do you think, Shiv? Well. I've seen that whole legendary warrior deck actually win our Swiss tournament. It's terrifying. I, it is terrifying. Everybody who played against it was like, I don't like this deck. It scares me. Also, if There's you ever play against uh, if you ever play against Dark One X with any legendary based deck, take your antidote for gold fever. Because <laughs> yeah. he plays a million golden cards, and they're all legendaries, yeah. and you just want to punch him because that deck is now worth like thirty thousand. <laughs> Warrior exactly. control is still not still not easy to play, so um, 
yeah, it's still very skill based. With, with, it was in good hands with Kistafa. Yeah. Kistafa and uh, Dark One X are the two players who play that deck at the moment. Yeah, well, I mean, there's more players who play it. There's but, yeah, more players. Play there's well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's also more players that play well. Just yes, to be yes, fair, to name that like Myra, Myra is also good. Oh, does he play it? Yes. Oh. Yeah, um, Myra is I... a warrior player. Masan plays it sometimes as well. Although. Yeah. But moving on past the warrior control here, uh, I think the the, the war song commander change. This this was like a bane and a boom at the same time for warriors, um, because you know what we ended up happening is with mages, when they nerfed unleash the hounds, all of a sudden mages said, oh by the way, we're going to go frost giant, and <laughs> nobody had an answer for that for the like longest time because it's one the one thing that kept mages in check was hunters. Yeah. And they, they pretty much you know said buy hunter. And so we saw mages go ape over giants, which, you know, was not all that unexpected. And then when they nerfed mage control aspects, all these people are sitting here with all these freaking giants going, well, now what do I do? Hey, I got an idea. Let's build a warrior. Yeah. And it got just this bad. So um, the change of Warsong Commander, I actually made a suggestion for six just to prevent that combo as well as... A we came up with that one, didn't right? we? Yeah, like yes, yes, and and uh, a tweak on Molten Giant because I'm sorry, Molten Giant is just way too powerful. They went way further than that. All right now, they've actually made it to where you can make a viable OTK and not have to spend that much on it. So I think they kind of overlooked a yeah. huge. This is potential. this is gonna come back to bite them if someone breaks it. Where the combo is, there's two. I've been uh, people have been theory crafting. Although I haven't seen any like any of the good players piloting it yet, but once someone figures out how to get it to work properly, it's probably gonna be quite popular. The first one is Gorhal on turn seven. And then on turn eight, you go one of two or Gorhal or Arcanite Reaper. And then next turn you go Warsong Commander into either Dread Corsairs for free with useful Brewmasters, or um what are they called? Blood Cell Corsairs? Blood Cell Raider. No, that's the 2 1. Is it? No, it's the 2 3. God damn it. Anyway, I keep getting the pirate <laughs> names confused. The 2 mana every 2 time. 3 that get like. <laughs> every time. Yeah, every time. I know what they do, I just can't remember the names. Anyway, the 2 mana 2 3 that gains attack based on your weapon. But that has 2 attack when you play it, which means it gains the charge bonus, and then it gains 7 attack from the Gorehal. Which then attacks for nine. Yeah. And, and then you attack. And then you that attack with the. Charge. Then you attack with the Gorehal for another seven. And if you have two of these, and then you have some youth with Brewmaster action going, you can one shot someone. <laughs> like, like forget thirty health. <laughs> Talking like. You don't 35. even need the Brewmasters in at all at that point. Either, that does like twenty eight can... without Brewmasters. It's insane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All you gotta do is two damage. That's relatively simple for any player to do. And with inner rages, yeah. like. Yeesh. Yeah, and people it gets were even afraid. worse. People were afraid because they, they came up with like a Raging Wagon uh, uh, combo. But they were afraid that they that it actually loses the charge when it, it goes doesn't. over 3 HP, but it does. It says... So, yeah. Wait a it's second. when it's played. I just spotted a mistake, Hearthbone, or Blizzard, depending on which is wrong here. It The text rework says when you play a minion. The, um, the card says when you summon. These are not the same oh, okay. thing. <laughs> um, someone's wrong here. I'm gonna check in Hearthstone uh, next time I log on. Though there was a slight change to War Song Commander that Actually, gave kind of hunters. Can, can one of you um? Can one of you do that? Log into Hearthstone and check War Song Commander. Summon. Does it say summon? summon? It says summon. Okay, so Blizzard got it wrong on their post. Wouldn't be the first time. Fail. Anyway, um, so summon is actually much more relevant. But there, there's actually a, another change in Warsong Commander that's not listed here that I think should be known. Wait a second. It used to be... Hold on. We're just... Wait, I don't think that combo works anymore if it says summon. Because it depends on the battle cry ordering. I'm going to test that and then get back to uh, back to guys and I'll put it in a video at some point when I have to figure it out. Because the battle cry ordering, it depends when the battle cry happens. If you see right. what I mean. And, but because yeah. because of the wording change, think something did happen with Warsong Commander. Before you could put 
down your other minions and then drop a Warsong Commander and they'd get the charge. Now you have to have Warsong Commander down first. Yeah. Which is means irrelevant, certain... but whatever. <laughs> oh, you, you think it's irrelevant, but now Hunters could actually plan against that. You know, it's like, okay, we're getting to the point where I know he's going to try this. Yeah. Puts down the snipe, stops the combo. Yeah. Uh, if you're not if you're not running acidic swamp ooze, snipe was a, another great option. So I mean that's kind of cool, but the charge, why? Yeah, the the charge thing. But then there's the actual card charge. Can can anyone figure out how this works now? That that, that that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I see some advantages. I'm I've seen people do the whole inner rage on a war again, and then throw charge on it and then throw rampage on it and say hey have a nice day it's just it's so weird <coughs> it's just a war song commander like on a spell it's just it's weird okay i'm gonna say it's weird it's weird <laughs> <laughs> it should we but move they've on they've been kind of trying to punish aura based oh. card you haven't yeah. noticed like blood imp and yeah this. they're they're moving a lot of base stuff anyway let's move on abusive sergeant no one cares because the change isn't that relevant uh, it's relevant to Priest, and that's fine. We'll Priest. talk about it. But Basically, you can give the attack bonus to anything, not just friendly. No one cares apart from big game hunter users, and if you're using Abusive Sergeant to combo a big yeah. game hunter, you're or doing you something wrong. if you want to kill wrong. your Savannas or something. Yeah. Right. Or if you want to, like, Shadow Word Death, the Azure Drake, which I guess is fairly relevant, but just run Dark Iron. <laughs> 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 like... Uh, yeah, but that, that, that's seven mana versus five, Jodo. Come on now. Yeah, but one of them's only useful in the combo, and the other one's useful in general. <laughs> Wait, my bad. Se that's six mana versus four. Yeah. Like, it can be used in pre stacks, mm. but no one actually uses it. Wait, whoa, 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 like whoa, 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 whoa. You just you corrected. Like uh, pre stack, it's just a dead, dead card most of the time. Uh, you know? Shiv, you just corrected yourself to being incorrect. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm still waking up here. Let me let me crack this monster, and uh, I'll be a little bit more alert. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. To the next stage. Okay, Dark Iron Dwarf. This is interesting. Oh. <laughs> um, this was caused by Moon. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Thanks, Moon. It, yeah. Anyway, um. So, Dark Iron Dwarf, it, the only change to the card is that the attack bonus isn't permanent, and the change was to reduce the Dark Iron Dwarf's overall power, and we wanted to make the battle cry effect the same as Abusive Sergeant, so that you don't have to f permanently buff one of your opponent's creatures, which is relevant. Um, now, post-patch, a lot of people were like, oh, Dark Iron Dwarf is unplayable. Just try it, just, tr just try it. Uh, especially if you're running rogue. If you're running rogue, just play two. Like, forget about the one of. The effect is still the same, and it's a 4-4 four, for four, four. Which is the most fun thing to say ever. Um, 4-4 for four, four, four. Anyway, if you have four, 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 fours, then you just made a sentence out of only fours. Anyway, um, moving on. The Dark Iron Dwarf change makes it incredibly versatile in rogue cantrip decks because you can play it for the buff, and also you don't have to buff your opponent's stuff which is nice. So I actually think that this weakens aggro decks that play things like Ardent Squire because it's not permanent, but it also actually is a buff to the card in rogue decks, weirdly enough. It nerfs the mage aggro, no longer 3-3 three, three Echo Lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I know, that sucks. Why stop at 3-3? Three, three? Why not just buff it a bunch, make it like a 5-5 five, five with taunt? <laughs> it also means no more, you know, 2-4 Nat Pagans either. <laughs> Whatever, anyway. Yeah, you don't get your permanent boost on your Nat Pagels or anything like that. But I actually... I think the card is... People are overreacting to the change here. I agree. Like, really, really overreacting to the change. Like, seriously, guys. I think it's still as much played as before. I haven't seen it as much, but I still think the card is playable. Like, really playable. It is really playable. Well, it seems Both like after body. every... It seems like after every patch or nerf or whatever, uh, people kind of get butthurt about something, so it falls out of favor. And then, like, two weeks later, there's that one guy who goes, hey, you know what? You guys were wrong. And this, he ends up winning a tournament good. with it. Yeah. So then it comes back in popularity. Also, so I, I think we're just waiting for that. Senjin has become more popular. Yes. 
this is still this engine killer. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, seriously. Um, but anyway, moving on to a change which does precisely nothing apart from make people cry about it. And question certain philosophies. From Blizzard, yes. Defender of Vargas. Now, if you look at the card, as I have it on screen right now, you'll notice that one of the numbers has been changed to a 2 from a 3. That's about it. This was never the problem with Defender of Argus. Anyway, sh should we read the, uh, the, um, the sort of the comment from Blizzard here to see if their logic is sound? Now, Defender of Argus was a card that found itself, found itself automatically included. That's a confusing wording. You need to rework that. Anyway, in many decks due to its power and stats, not stats. <laughs> we want players to have an option of what cards they put in their decks. So cards that feel like they must be in all decks, especially neutral ones, are not ideal. I'm now, still running too. Yeah, <laughs> now... Uh, <laughs> now, Blizzard, there's this little thing called the Shields Up Engine. It exploits Defender and Sun Fury Protector by putting taunt on such wonderful cards like Molten Giants and Twilight Drakes. I don't care if it has one less attack. You still have to deal with a 5-10 with Taunt. <laughs> like, <laughs> seriously? <laughs> it's still featured in the two best decks in the entire format. Agreed. Like, you can't, you can't just nerf some... It's like if they said, oh, oh, by the way, guys, Dark Iron Dwarf is now a 3-4. Yeah, man. Anyway, the... That is more relevant, though. Than it's that. more relevant. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually more relevant. That's how insanely bad this change was. Um, yeah. Okay, let's look at some other options. Oh, oh yeah. It's, it's, like them, it's like them changing Ancient of War's health to 9. <laughs> That's how relevant this change is. Like, it still blocks everything all day. Like, seriously. It's just... People are still talking about how Defender of Argus is not playable anymore. Can anyone, like, give me... It, like, put this in the comment section if you have an answer. Can anyone give me a viable reason for why this isn't playable? Is this... <sighs> anyway, what you do know, you two think? <laughs> well, Joda, you remember we did the mana cast a bit ago where we were talking about, like, all these overly played, like, rares and neutral cards and stuff yeah, of that nature? We called it, and by the way. And, and we, we looked at Defender Vargas, and we were like, you know, what the hell is this guy defending? Seriously. He boosts other things up. He's it the became coward required of in every deck. Yeah. So, I, the, the suggestion we made was, okay, the big problem with Defender Vargas is not his stats. It's the plus one attack he gives. You know, we, we was like, you know, take that away, and this card probably won't be in a lot of decks, because it, he's basically better than a uh, Shattered Sun Cleric. Hands down. Yeah. So... We, we, we basically said just remove the attack, and you know what? I, I would even say add an, uh, another life on the back end. It would still right? be it would still be a part of the Shields Up engine if it, uh, it, you got rid of the attack, but it wouldn't be in every deck. I, I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly on that. Um, but I think it's... I, I don't think this actually really did anything to it. It reminds me so much of what they did to Argent Commander. And it was like, oh yeah, that makes no sense Still at being all. played. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, not so much anymore because of Sylvanas change, but we'll get to that. In That's more to other six drops getting better as opposed to Argent Commander getting worse. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, not much to add from my side. Like, like that's about everything. Welcome to the Shields Up era. Have fun. Yeah, also, can, can we, like, make a pact to not call the stupid Warlock deck Big Hand Lock? Uh. <laughs> it's, it's such a dumb name. It's like, so hard for me because, like, all the Europeans I interview, that's exactly what they call it. Handlock, handlock, handlock. I'm like, Gee. What does that even mean? Uh, you know, I thought it was basically somebody beating off and then got, like, it... lockjaw the hand. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, like, talk to the hand? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm like, you know where that name originates from? Like, a lot of the stuff, it's Artosis, who randomly called it handlock or big handlock because small handlockers were look aggro. Well, that explains a certain aspect of that, but and I'm not going to go into it. Shut up. Anyway, the, um... And then there was the other side of it, which people have been calling it, which is Control Warlock. There's nothing control about playing big things from turns 4 to 7 and smashing you in the face repeatedly. 
No, no, there's a control aspect in that, Jodo. It's controlling your opponent's ability to crap his pants. Yeah, control so. controlling your opponent's ability to get medical help for their face. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but it's just stop calling it big hand lock. It sounds horrible. <laughs> like it's it. You know what it reminds me of when um, I originally started calling the rogue deck cantrip rogue, and people were like, "Oh, that's an amazing idea," because people were calling it before draw power rogue. What does that even draw mean? Power. <laughs> Like, yeah. just a small rant on that because there's nothing to talk about with Defender of Argus. Um, now onto a card which a lot of people seem to not like any changes happening to. This this was like the Sacred Cow of Hearthstone for some reason. Oh my god, yes. Like, Novice Engineer. Like, I think a change was needed. Let's just, let's just read over it, shall we? So it's now a 1-1 from a 1-2. Novice was played in most non-rush decks, and even some rush decks, due to its cost and power. That's the same for all cards. Whatever. Similar in reasoning to our Defender Vargas change. No, it wasn't. That one didn't do anything. This one did. We want players to have an option of what cards they put in their decks. That's a quote from the previous paragraph, by the way. Yeah, there it is. Anyway. um, So, it's now 1-1. Now, when the patch came out, Everyone looked at this and was sh like shocked. They were like, why has Novice Engineer changed? Why was it changed? It wasn't overpowered in any way. It wasn't causing any issues in the metagame. Was anyone actually surprised that Novice Engineer was changed? Um, no. Only only at first, but that's, that was like just a short <coughs> moment. Then, I, then when I th thought about it, it's like Novice Engineer wasn't like every deck. You had a 28 card deck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why? Because so... it makes your deck smaller. And to be fair, it's, it's still a card that you can play, it's still a good card. It's still a really good card in late game as well. I mean, Luke Hoarder says Just, hi, but... Uh, no, 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 in late game, Lovis is actually much better. Yeah, because you top yeah. deck it and then you play it and you top deck yeah. another thing. I've been playing one Novice, one Shiv from two Novice recently. Yeah, the, the, the change to Novice Engineer has now made uh, the Rogue spell Shiv way more powerful. Yeah. Which is a good thing. Not to mention the fact that uh, with Novice being nerfed, there's more spell power in these decks now because they're playing double the zero. Mm-hmm. So mm -hmm. Shiv is actually actively stronger. I mean, I said it on the, the weekly with uh, with Rogue Cantrip that Novice Engineer and Shiv are interchangeable depending on how many buffs you're running for Novice and how many spell power minions you're running for, uh, for Shiv. Shiv backstabs, yeah. Yeah, they're very interchangeable. So it's... Um, it's an interesting nerf in my mind. I think it was correct. Uh, I do see it as something which was a problem because it was a problem. <laughs> it was in every deck. I'm yeah. kind of happy to see Novus nerfed a bit. It was a pain in the neck. What, what I wasn't happy to see was all the rage about it. I could not believe how many people were upset about it. I think even like forum threads got lobbed you, man. got it, suspended for this. Yeah, it was the holy cow of Novice Engineer. It, it was the oh holy cow God. of Hearthstone. It was Novice Engineer. Yeah, it, it, it was also the uh, the recruit killer of Paladins. Oh my God, this caused <laughs> yep. so many problems for Paladins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, a, a Novice Engineer would just you'd set up draw a card if they go recruit you're like okay whatever and then for the rest of the game they recruit to be <laughs> useless because you just hero power them yeah. <laughs> it was so dumb um but yeah now you can't do that you can't just advance your tempo for free but, I, I think uh, one of the biggest combinations that this killed was like novice engineer to a um defender of argus to get like a 2-3 yeah. taunter the other which, thing was harvest learned, golem dude like this killed yeah, that token, Har man, and you couldn't kill oh, the novice did. with hero powers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the old one did some work. You didn't want to backstab yeah, it, it, but you kind of had to sometimes. Oh, yeah. I'm fine with this change, to be honest. Me too. Anything I have else? no qualms with this. Anything else, guys? We're moving on. Nope. Yep. Stop bitching about it. <laughs> Deal with it. It's a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Now, I think Solanus' change was more to do with killing Argent Commander finally, as opposed to nerfing the card, but anyway. So it now costs 6 mana from 5, and the reasoning was, um, Sylvanas had power and stats, stop using this phrase. Power and stats is like saying, the potential of the card was too high. That made it a bit too powerful compared to other 5 costs. 
Now, I just want to make a comment here about the five cost thing. Uh, anyone, go, go into Hearthstone and then put in five drops. Look for neutral five drops that aren't Azure Drakes that are playable. Abomination, that's about it. Even even that's debatable. Yeah, <laughs> but, even that's debatable. Like, what happened to the five drops? <laughs> There's like four drops, super powerful, five drop, nothing. Six drop, insane. What happened to the five drops? Well, they, they keep alluding to that they will, in like the adventuring system and like new card expansions, they'll fix that discrepancy. If they add five drops that are good, the world is going to implode. Yeah, I agree. Well, well, Kodo, Gadgetson, and Spiteful Smith are three pretty good ones. Spiteful Smith is an Spiteful awesome Smith card. is okay. Oh, I disagree. It's a great card. In one deck. <laughs> 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 Kodo has a recent comeback, a especially bit, because yeah. of the Druids, because of Keeper, and because but of Harvest Golems. Have you guys noticed that the only consistent 5-drop in the metagame has been Azure Drake? Mm, and Gadgetson. Even yeah. Druids and well, no, Druids that, and Warriors That play comes and goes. It doesn't really stay. I guess. That's mainly because of Argent Commander, but... Um, Anyway, so the rest of the paragraph, which made it automatically included in most decks. That's the fourth time they've said it in this patch. Anyway, um, we want players to have an option of what cards they put in their decks. Well, is this like the drinking game? Like, <laughs> how many times have they said that? Like, you. Alright, so I'm just gonna highlight this. So if you uh, automatically made it, feel the. Alright, so that, that's one. Um, two. Three. <laughs> There's so many of them. Anyway, um, we want players to have an option of what card. Did they just copy paste this? <laughs> I think no. they did. I think they did. <laughs> what the fuck? And this is this is the kicker, by the way. Look at the last bit here. So cards that feel like they must be in all decks, especially neutral ones, are not ideal. Look at the paragraph for Defender of Argus. <laughs> Okay. You can't just copy paste explanations, Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway, Sylvanas was completely broken at five. Like, did we establish this? Oh yeah. It was dumb. Like, don't, don't even, don't even argue that Sylvanas did not need a nerf. There was actually a post um, on the farms which I found hilarious. Which was this guy calling for an earth in Sylvanas. And the first response was, just because it's played in a lot of decks does not make it overpowered. And the guy uh, below him said, correction, all decks? And uh, yes, that does make it overpowered. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this. It was brilliant. It was. But the other problem was the Sylvanas trading. Oh, God. I hate that mechanic so much. Basically, if two Sylvanases die at the same time by trading with each other, the first one played activates first, which you may think, oh, that's really simple. No, it isn't. Because you could steal a minion on his side, then he'd steal that minion on your side. But the probability would change. So sometimes, one, it would glitch the positioning thing because something was happening I didn't agree with. The other one was animations going off randomly. And the second one was another visual glitch, which caused the card to go off the side of the screen and then appear on your opponent's board. <laughs> Like it, I've even seen it hovering too. Yeah, it like flies around. It's just like yes. there's a lot of weird stuff that goes on when two Savannas kill each other. Like I must admit, some really it was weird game stuff that breaking. goes on. But anyway, the rest of the card. Now, I said earlier that all this was doing is really killing off Argent Commander. And the reason I said that is because Argent Commander was nerfed, and then it was played as two off. But then the metagame shifted to taunt it to taunts. So it's played as a one of with Black Knight or Karen, but usually you still play one. Then it was shifted to either Argent Commander, Karen, or Black Knight, and then post patch Sylvanas got nerfed. So now it's uh, you for your two six drops. You either play Sylvanas and Black Knight, Sylvanas and Karen, or Karen and Black Knight. Yeah, but Argent Commander is still an aggro deck. Oh, it's still good. Like I still it is play still it. Good. But yeah, so do I. In some of the slower decks, they're just like, meh, whatever, 4-2 but charge, yeah, who cares? not in my Druid deck, for example, because I'm, I'm just having, like, slower 6-drop slower that, that are better. Yeah. The problem I have with this, though, is the fact that all the viable 6-drops, apart from Argent Commander, are legendaries now. Yep. 
Um, yeah. Uh, noticing a common trend in the dust department recently. Anyway, uh, so as far as the Savannah's change affects gameplay, I'm gonna start with Shiv this time. All right. Um, a while back, I uh, I started a legendary card spotlight, and one of the first cards I actually did was Savannah. And a lot of people actually liked that. Had a lot of uh, positive response on it. The next one I did involved Ragnaros, and in there I put in a combination for Warlocks. Then it involved Avoid Terror and Sylvana to deal with Ragnarok. To Ragnaros. steal the rag, yeah. To steal the rag and get an 8-8 at the same time. And people were like, wait, what? And apparently, like, this combination, while it seems so simple on paper, nobody had thought of. And then it started popping up everywhere before they nerfed the hell out of Ragnarok. The other one was Shadow Flame. Shadow Flaming yes. Sylvanas worked as well. Oh, yeah, Shadow Flaming Sylvana worked as well, but then you get an injured rag. But... Yeah. Um, so I, I think this kind of like limits some of those play possibilities that uh, like Warlocks had, that Priest had, and things of that nature to kind of like instantly grab something, which is like a huge thing that people complain about a lot. And a lot of people complain about Sylvana being overpowered. They wanted it either staying at 5, dropping to a 4-4. Four, four. They wanted it going up to 6. Uh, one person said it should be an 8 mana. <laughs> Which I was like, really? What? <laughs> eight man. <laughs> I yeah, I was like, really? It's like, yeah, I can justify it. It's like, please don't. <laughs> because at that point, it's like, I don't. No, no. No, I'm not paying eight mana for a five five that has the mind control tech <laughs> ability. Exactly, exactly. So uh, I think it was very much relevant to the meta because, uh, again, every deck you saw, Sylvana was in it. Sylvana was in it. But then again, also in the same decks you saw, Tink Master. Tink Master. You saw, yeah, mm -hmm. the Black Knight and all that. So now I'm wondering if that same kind of shift and changing is going to happen. Are we going to see Tickmaster go to four? Are we going to see um, the Black Knight be changed? To I don't some think degree? the Black Knight's going to be changed. No, ba Black Knight's perfectly balanced. I don't care what people say on that. It's perfectly balanced. If you run that um, many taunts, it's your fault. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And you know, I just I, I'm really hoping that Blizzard is not looking at the amount of uh, times these cards are used in decks versus its actual balance. If you make a really good card, yeah, it's going to be used a lot in a lot of decks. Sylvana, on the other hand, it was a great card. <laughs> it was like, I mean, oh my god, this card is so freaking great. It was broken. It really it was. was uh, it was unbalanced. It, it was just broken. You know, it was like, hey look, I get a, an RNG mind control and a 5-5 five five body. Thank you, Blizzard. So, yeah. yeah, it was it was a weird, weird uh, like situation that was created. I'll put it that way. It was. It really, really was. But I do think that um, the Sylvanas change doesn't affect too much. Like it's not played a lot in some of the faster decks now, which is fine. But the yep. metagame dominating decks are not fast. Like no. Even even Warlock aggro decks with like a four mana curve max were playing played it. Sylvanas as a five drop. <laughs> yeah, it just um, it didn't make sense. It was as good, <laughs> but um, yeah, for me it's kind of a relevant change, uh, especially for my Druid deck because I had this little option where I could play Sylvanas and Starfall <laughs> and get that little, little Ragnaros or whatever. <laughs> Was kind of funny. It, like it's. You can it's still limiting. naturalize your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can still naturalize. It. That's possible. Um, like double. You could like double spell power, double moon fire it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like that's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you technically can. You technically can. Yeah. You can also like bite hero power savagery. <laughs> it's so fast. I think it's a good Why? change. <laughs> it's good that they didn't change the like um, the flavor of the cards because the card flavor is actually pretty good. You have to think about you oh, have yeah. to think about your turn a lot. What's gonna happen? I, I like the uh, the death rattle effect. Yeah, it's the old mind control tech for anyone who remembers. But on a death rattle, the old mind control tech was dumb. Like oh, yeah. just think <laughs> about the new mind control tech, but remove the four. Just said steal the minion. It was so stupid, it was banned in tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> you play Ragnaros. No, you don't. Right? <laughs> it was just shutting down everything. <laughs> it was a three mana mind control. It was so stupid. 
Uh, yeah. yeah but didn't they change it like shortly thereafter, though? Oh yeah, they changed it really quickly. Yeah, <laughs> somebody went, "Oops." It's like, oh yeah, we forgot to put a little number on the end here. Um, but yeah, that was banned in tournaments for a long time. Yeah. So I I think four is a, a little bit of a high number for mind control at this point because mind of the meta. Mind control tech, yeah. But yeah. um, I I think that should probably be a three would be a little bit more apropos, but maybe you know, that's just me. Anyway, so. We're, we're agreed on Sylvanas. It's 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 a relevant change, but not always. It's still relevant. Oh, uh, another typing mistake, by the way. They forgot a space between uh, it and charge in the Warsong Commander text. Why do I keep noticing this stuff? Anyway, um... You're worse than my editor, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I keep making typo mistakes, man. <laughs> in my I, own you, videos. You, you, know, you know Homebrew's going to watch this and go... Good job, Jodo. Good, Good job. job. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, um, Homebrewed, or Scotty as we like to call him, is the uh, article editor <laughs> for Mana Grind, and he has to deal with all the spelling mistakes. Oh man, do I keep that boy busy. Yeah. Anyway, so the patch overall, I think it was okay. It's the best patch they've done. I'm not saying much, but it's the best patch they've done. Um, it shifted the meta game. Yeah, it it shifted. It gutted. It gutted uh, aggro. Which, let's be honest, the 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 game had been so aggro centric for so long. It needed to happen. It was skillless. It was actually it really skillless. Was. It really was. Like now I like my fast skillless. decks. Yeah, now we have hunter skillless. But anyway, I do like my fast decks, but I don't like a format that's that fast. I will find both of you. I swear. <laughs> Hunter is skill, dude. People like I just, know it is, and they, that's what makes me so sad. They just play target creature with charge, attack you, and ignore the board for the whole game. Oh, and don't forget to use hero power. Don't forget to use the hero power. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so what? What do you? Uh, what do you guys think of the patch overall? I think um, it's I thought... a good step in the right direction. Yeah. What about As you? As I man? said, it was a needed meta game shift. It might have shifted it a bit too much, like uh, the aggro decks are pretty much dead, kind of. They, they murdered I don't them. See, I don't see them that often anymore. They murdered Maybe them I'm in their just sleep. Maybe I'm getting them. <laughs> yeah. So... I don't know. Um, the, the, two, I, the two complaints I do have, besides uh, them copying the same paragraph five times, is the charge change, not the Warsong Commander change, but the charge change. Uh, and the Defender of Argus change. Those are my only two problems. Mm. Though, I yeah. will say, the aggro change, it hasn't really changed all that much, it's mutated. Instead of aggro being a whole bunch of low drop minions, we it's have now, charge. it's a progressive curve. <laughs> Instead, and I've been seeing this, it's like a progressive build up to bigger minions. I saw it in a Warlock deck, I was like, wait, what the heck is this? And it just caught me off guard so badly that I, I, I just laid there with my, my jaw open as he was pummeling me. I couldn't figure out what he was doing. Yeah. I was, I was expecting the whole um, Shields Up engine and got something completely different. So I, is, I, there, there is, is a place. It, you know, it, 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 can, it can definitely come back into a progressive kind of ramp without the, you know, Druid ability and do something. Yeah. Oh, um, post-patch, by the way, a bunch of people were telling me um, that Druid was no longer uh, the best deck in the format. I just yeah. want to point Shit. out the fact that uh, Druid came second in a top deck tournament, and then it won three daily tournaments this week, and it has already been doing well, and... <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like, called it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's still good. No, no matter how you cut it, Druid is probably the most complete class there is in the game. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, you know, people are like, oh, Druid, this, Druid, this. The reason why Druids get so much hate is because all other classes are incomplete in comparison. I agree. Yeah, it's like Paladin is the closest, but the hero power is shit. Oh, agree. Don't <laughs> even started if we on the Paladin choosable... hero power. If we could have choosable hero powers for our classes, I think Paladin would be just a little bit better. Yeah. Anyway, um... We're probably going to bring this video to a close, uh, but if, if you guys ever want to come on and chat to any of the three of us, we're usually on TeamSpeak, which
which is managrind.com is the address. Um, me and Shiv are on 90% of the time. Moon has a work schedule he has to abide by, so he's not always on. But uh, you might catch him every so often. I have a life. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. I do as well, just mine is in the morning. <laughs> so I'm like always on. I don't um, have a life. Then Shiv is like, I have no life. <laughs> <laughs> I have kittens, okay? That's all I got. I've got kittens. <laughs> uh, anyway, so... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna close this out. So uh, s say goodbye, you two. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, you two. See ya. speak. Yeah. Goodbye, user. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so thank you for watching. If you have any comments and you don't agree with any of this stuff, you can send all your complaints to Shiv at Manogram. Anyway, you can put it in the <laughs> comment section below. Seriously, seriously, Jonah, <laughs> you know how much hate mail I already get right now? People are questioning my ethnicity. That, that's getting old with a quickness. <laughs> but anyway, put any, uh, put any opinions you have in the comment section below. And I'll put the information to Mana Grind's TeamSpeak and to a channel and such in the description. Pass for now. This has been Jotto, Moon, and Shiv. Signing off. <laughs>